Hello world, shitexpress.com, a website that allows you to literally send a box of poo to anyone on the planet, has been hacked by a prolific troll, who then leaks the site's entire database. A database which includes the addresses of all those who received the pooey packages, along with the very mean personalised messages that were included in the deliveries. So, Shit Express, it's one of those websites that has received a lot of media attention for just how ridiculous it is. Idea being, if you don't like someone enough to spend $16.95 to send them a box of poo, then this is the site for you. Just type in the name and address of your worst enemy, write them a personalised message, select your favourite kind of animal droppings, then just pay, and that's it. Best part is, the package is sent anonymously, as the recipient has no idea who sent it. Well, anonymous until a few days ago, when a customer found an SQL injection vulnerability in the site. Rather than doing the responsible thing and letting the site's owners know, he instead exploited the bug, downloading the site's entire database and then publishing it for free on Breach forums. The database has roughly 20,000 records, going back all the way to 2014. It contains the addresses of the poo recipients, along with those personalised messages that were included in the deliveries. Now, I've had a look at the leaked data, specifically those personalised messages, for journalistic reasons of course, and whilst many of these poo packages were sent by people to their friends as a kind of prank, there are people who've used this service to break up with their partner, accuse people of murder, and all kinds of awful things. Believe me, there is no limit to what people have written in that message box. And after doing some rudimentary analysis, I found that US Supreme Court justices have received dozens of packages, and there are non-famous people who've been sent numerous packages, for reasons unknown. Aside from, of course, being very funny to read through, this database could find a use in cybercriminals. One forum member called the leak a blackmailing kit, and they do have a point. If someone who used this service added their email to the order so they could receive shipping updates, then their email address will be in the database, so it could be possible for a bad actor to personally identify them and demand a fee if they don't want to be outed to the poo box's recipient. But regardless, who even leaks this database to begin with? Well, it was none other than Pom Pom Perrin. You're probably not immediately familiar with him, but this cyber miscreant has popped up before on this channel. He also happens to be the owner of Breach Forums itself, a site for selling data leaks which recently passed 60,000 users. So Pom Pom Perrin has been a regular customer of Shit Express, having previously used the service to send smelly packages to a security researcher whom he has a long-standing feud with, one Vinny Troyer. Now we don't have time to go into detail on that feud, for that you'll have to see my video about the time Pom Pom Perrin literally hacked the FBI so he could use their email server to send thousands of emails to random people, emails which claimed that you had been hacked by Vinny Troyer and that he was still in your systems, which obviously wasn't the case. Pom Pom Perrin is a master troll, and he no doubt leaks this database just for the hell of it. However, the data leak was handled as well as could have been expected by the website's owners. They issued a statement accepting that they were at fault and had fixed the problem. Next up, this story is bizarre. So a ransomware gang hacked into a UK water company, spending months in their system, gaining access to industrial control systems and exfiltrating 5 terabytes of data, only to mess up right at the last moment when the cybercriminals tried to extort the wrong water company for money, completely derailing their operation. It's the Klopp ransomware gang taking the L here. A few months ago, they hacked into what they thought was Thames Water, which is the UK's largest water company, supplying to 15 million households here in the UK. But, but hang on, after the drama of the colonial pipeline hack, which caused literal fuel shortages, hadn't ransomware gangs kind of agreed to the unwritten rule of not targeting critical infrastructure, things like water supplies, simply because disrupting their operation tends to piss off governments and gets the FBI on their case? Well. Yes, but Klopp came up with a plan, where they could have their cake and eat it too. Instead of encrypting the files of the water supplier that they'd hacked into, because that could prevent the water supplier from being able to pump water, they would instead exfiltrate as much data as they could from their systems and would threaten to release it publicly if the ransom went unpaid. So the cyber criminals executed on their plan a few days ago, which just so happened to coincide with water shortages here in the UK. Klopp threatened to publicly post 5 terabytes of Thames Water's data if they didn't pay the ransom. The ransom amount isn't public, but you can bet it was in the millions. 
The miscreants also apparently gained enough access to mess with the water supply itself, posting screenshots of the water company's industrial control systems as proof. If they did try to poison the water supply, it wouldn't be the first time. Last year, someone tried to do just that after they gained access to a water treatment facility in Florida. But in this case, the cyber miscreants were more preoccupied with getting paid. In response to the ransom demand, Thames Water simply refused, claiming that they hadn't even been hacked in the first place, putting out a press release calling this a cyber hoax. In response, Klopp started leaking data through their dark website, releasing files bit by bit, starting with photocopied passports and driving licenses of employees. But cybersecurity researchers started looking through the leaks and spotted something peculiar. On one of the leaked driving license documents, it clearly says that the person is employed by South Staffordshire and not Thames Water. It quickly became apparent that sure, the cyber criminals had hacked into a UK water company, but they had been trying to extort the wrong one. The Klopp ransomware gang quickly changed the name of the victim on their dark website, but by that point, it was too late. Given that they had already started leaking data, there was no chance of getting a ransom payment from the actual victim company, South Staffs. Months of work was ruined over what I'm struggling to describe as a simple error. I really can't understand how the two companies were confused. I mean, sure, they both have water in their name, but I, I'm just going to go ahead and call this divine karma. Next up, a quick story of a developer who tried hacking his car's entertainment system only to realize how hilariously insecure it was, that the car's manufacturer was signing updates using encryption keys copied from online programming tutorials. So a green Luigi one wanted to hack his new Hyundai's entertainment system so he could play around with it and ultimately see what he could do with it, which is quite common in the hacker world. Just a few days ago at DEF CON, someone was showing off a tractor display they had hacked to run Doom. But anyway, our developer plans to hack the system by modifying a firmware update, adding custom code which would give him root access. The first hurdle was that the official updates provided by Hyundai used password protected zips, although he managed to bypass this by exploiting a known vulnerability in protected zips, whereby if you have the plain text of one of the encrypted files within the archive, you can leverage that to decrypt the entire archive. He managed to find a plain text version of one of the files on the internet, so the first hurdle was gone. However, he hit another snag, in that the firmware updates were of course cryptographically signed by Hyundai themselves, so modifying code in an update would ultimately cause the update process to be rejected by the car. However, the zip he decrypted earlier contained the public key used for signing, which he googled on the off chance someone else had documented the process of hacking this particular entertainment system. And this Google search led him to a peculiar discovery, that the public key being used to sign official firmware updates was copied from an online programming tutorial. The tutorial of course contained the corresponding private key alongside it, making the eventual routing of his car possible. I'll make sure to link his blog post in the description, it's super in depth and really worth reading if you want all the juicy details. This video was made possible by Linode, who are giving you a $100 60-day credit just for signing up. Linode is essentially your Swiss army knife for cloud computing. If it runs on Linux, it'll run on Linode. One great feature of Linode is their app marketplace, which makes it super easy to spin up servers with pre-configured software. Use Linode's Kali Linux app to quickly spin up a fresh instance of Kali. The installer makes it easy to configure the basics, like VNC passwords, whether you want a desktop environment, and so on. Linode can run almost anything by providing all the tools a developer really needs at competitive prices. Use the link in the description now to claim your free $100. As always, thanks for watching. Sources can of course be found in the video description and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.